listen to Kovai Vani. Enjoy the podcast by our enthusiastic young residents. Kovai Care is the best place to retire. Panakkam. Caring for those who have always cared for us. We have so far talked of seniors, by seniors and for seniors. The following podcast is from a caregiver whose father is a cancer patient. Listening to her journey of caregiving is an eye opener. I hand you over to Mudita. Hi, my name is Mudita Tirkar. I am 38 years old and I am here with my husband Sameer. Today uh, we are discussing my experience over the last few months. My dad, Mr. Kaushal Kumar Chaturvedi is 75 and has been diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer. In this stage the cancer has spread to the other organs or parts of the body. It is also referred to as metastatic or advanced cancer. In my father's case it has metastasized to his brain, his bones, his lymph nodes and uh, most recently to his liver. In the last few months uh, my mom has taken up the role of managing the physical, emotional, spiritual and practical needs of my dad on a day-to-day basis. We do have a nurse who takes care of all needs related to dad's medication, his exercise, meals. Uh, but mom is the one who oversees things such as tracking dad's medication, how much food has he eaten today, monitoring and managing frequent changes in his diet. It's been happening in the last uh, couple of weeks that you know we've been changing his diet uh, based on what we've been told by the palliative counselor. um general hygiene pretty much everything mom has been overseeing this for him and i i actually believe that in such situations a personal touch makes a lot of difference um you know the quality of life improves and is made easy my dad for instance visibly perks up if one of our relatives comes over to meet him it's almost like a change of scenery for him um little little things matter and these could be around physical or mental comfort the aim is to convey through actions that a we care and we are really listening to what he wants um uh, and doing something about it so for instance a month or so back my dad told me that he was bored of looking at the same flower pot and digital clock that was kept near his bedside and that was right in his line of vision all the time so i made a few changes um or you know at some point he said that the kurtas that he usually wears uh they become cumbersome to change into uh you know so we bought him stretchable comfortable and loose t-shirts uh we have we have actually set up a hospital bed at home to ensure dad is as comfortable as possible but that only addresses part of the caregiving infrastructure and support that he requires what matters most i think is the atmosphere in the room we never mope in front of dad we crack jokes even though he doesn't respond uh we don't correct him when he says good morning at 9 in the night we just respond back with a good morning and then move on to whatever else that we are doing in the room um my mom she loves singing she always has so sometimes she sings different songs to dad in the hope that he enjoys at least something in that um it isn't easy to do this on a daily basis but uh, she keeps at it we all do uh people keep telling us to be strong and all i say is that there is no other option but to be strong so here i am today sharing our experience and our story uh, hoping it helps in some manner or the other to the people who are listening to it today let's start from the beginning uh, when did we learn about this so due to the ongoing pandemic i wasn't able to visit my parents for more than a year in july 2021 when i finally did get to see them something seemed very wrong with dad he was complaining of muscular pain in his back and wore a neck brace all the time uh in addition he was sleeping nearly all the time and his meal portion size had come down to ridiculous levels assuming this was related to some muscular issues we uh, took him to a physio and an orthopedic The doctors felt that it's a spasm in the trapezius muscle and will need painkillers and physiotherapy. Both were started immediately. However, um, about a month later there was little relief. The potency and dosage of the painkillers was further increased, but that didn't help either. Um in September dad went over to visit his regular general practitioner 
and as he walked in the doctor noticed that dad was walking in a slightly lopsided manner if i could call it that he immediately told my dad to get a chest ct scan and a brain mri done um that night a lab technician gave us one of the worst news that we could imagine uh dad had lung cancer with several lesions in his brain i wish i could show you the lung x ray but once you see it you just can't unsee it the left lung by then was completely affected and uh, the right lung had increased in size to overcompensate for its uh, failing counterpart were there any symptoms surprisingly actually he had no symptoms that one would associate with lung cancer there was no coughing no wheezing no shortness of breath and as i read up further i got to know that there can be telltale signs or symptoms sometimes but not always uh, some cancers grow in places where they you know they won't cause any signs or symptoms until they have advanced um so till august of 2021 my dad was able to get dressed on his own was of lucid mental state in fact he was the chairman of the building they lived in and managed its day to day affairs he could hold a conversation appreciate a good glass of whiskey was fairly mobile enough to go out for lunch sit in a car and play with his grandchildren so in fact the upper back uh, muscular pain that started this whole thing was actually the cancer taking a hold of the trapezius muscles so beyond that there was nothing else to indicate this can we discuss the line of treatment okay so once we got to know its cancer we immediately shifted him from surat to bombay because we had a better network of influence when it came to cancer treatment and infrastructure support in bombay as directed by the oncologist we got a full body pet scan done the pet scan showed that the cancer has metastasized to his bones brain and lymph nodes to say it was heartbreaking wouldn't even begin to cover how shattered we were my brother and i tried to downplay the seriousness of the situation in front of our parents by avoiding the use of words like advanced stage or stage 4 and in hindsight i think maybe we should have told him about what exactly was going on so that he had more time to put his affairs in order as part of the treatment the first step was to start radiation for the brain to reduce the lesions and try and ensure he wouldn't suffer from any fits or seizures i knew that radiation would take a toll on his body as well which is why my sole aim was to build his appetite back to some semblance of normalcy i have seen two cases of cancer in my family by now and i i honestly feel that radiation is always the more aggressive one people think it's chemo but trust me your body goes through an unforgiving cycle of treatment on a day in day out basis with radiation uh, my dad's appetite went down which was followed by a loss of body strength which in turn led to periods of disorientation in him by the time we rolled him in for his first round of chemotherapy and immunotherapy via intravenous in november his body had already become really weak and after a few weeks uh, after the first round uh, of chemo and immuno the doctors decided that it's best to not make my dad endure another round of chemo because his body just can't take it my father is currently under palliative care which doesn't focus on treatment per se but it it focuses more on making the patient as comfortable as possible the last few months uh, you know what has it been like for the family but i i know it sounds like a cliche but the last few months have been heartbreaking for all of us as a family um the first instinct was to obviously ask questions like what is his cancer stage how much time does he have but honestly the answer you get is as per the law of averages at fourth stage a doctor cannot tell you if it's a few weeks a few months or a year it's a very broad spectrum that they kind of indicate we in fact were told that he has about a year but with the kind of downward spiral my dad has undergone since september i am thankful for every day we have with him but at the same time i also pray that he doesn't suffer much in these last few months i have come across quite a few good you know people good samaritans and from very surprising quarters and now more than ever i believe in karma and i have been in turn uh, trying to pass it around our coping mechanism as a family is very different from most and i guess each family has their own way of dealing with such situations my brother and i would crack jokes use humor as our defense mechanism while waiting at the opd to meet the oncologist we would cry after coming out from the appointment 
we would then come home and make it like something we all just need to deal with we just need to be a little strong but you know as time has gone by sometimes it feels that even humor is a very weak armor to kind of hold on to uh when someone asks how dad is doing i'm never really sure how to respond to it um uh, is he in a good con- condition no he's not is he getting better no he's not but we now take everything one day at a time uh, earlier there were good days there were bad days now it's more relative uh if today he has had a full meal it is a good day if he has listened to the hanuman chalisa or suprabhatam without falling asleep it is a good day if he is able to say a few words or even smile it is a good day and then there are days where it is painful to watch someone you love so much like this he cannot walk he cannot talk he cannot express what he is thinking or feeling all his daily functions are now taken care of by others i've been told that though he is no longer able to respond his brain can still understand what is being said or is happening you know my my dad is an iit bombay alumni someone who has always loved mathematics in fact he wanted to start his own math tuitions not for the money but because he genuinely wanted to spread a love for the subject amongst youngsters and you know to see someone so intelligent so capable you know being caged within his own body is something no one should be subjected to how have you and the family dealt with this well we all think we can manage everything that life throws at us but no matter how much one hears about this disease and the war it wages there are some things that mentally we are simply not equipped enough to handle we try and do what we feel is best for the person who's going through this illness but sometimes even the best of intentions don't convert to positive outcomes initially i would push my father to do things normal things like picking up his spoon and eat on his own you know i was told by the physiotherapist that dad had the strength to do everything but he was just being stubborn about it so during his physio sessions i would push my dad to do more i wouldn't listen to when he, you know he used to say i can't do more i say yeah of course you can you have the strength come on you can do this but looking back i really wish i hadn't been so demanding of him back then sometime in november i was speaking to a cancer coach you know a, a palliative care counselor to discuss my dad's case the pros and cons of chemotherapy versus palliative care and that's when the counselor gently pointed out certain gaps in my thinking and approach i had to accept that his body is giving up that the treatments are very aggressive so he he is undergoing a lot that we could unknowingly jeopardize his life by being stubborn about treatment about physio and everything else along with it but the fact is that he's just not able to do it he's trying but he's not able to that the only thing that is driving him to still try is the love that he feels for us most importantly i had to accept the fact that you know i i can't fix things it's my innate nature to do so and this time i was told that you know you can't fix this that you know he has led a life of dignity and he deserves nothing less than that now the last few months i have seen my mom pendulate between despair blind faith in god in our ancestors whatever you believe in anger denial reconciliation and then you know kind of reset to go through all these emotions all over again you know my dad and she have been partners for 40 years as his partner for life it has been difficult for her to process what has been happening while we do have a nurse to help out mom is also his primary caregiver and at 71 it is mentally physically emotionally exhausting for her sometimes she gets frustrated and vents it by getting irritated with him and in times like these earlier i would get angry and tell her that she needs to be strong she needs to be good she needs to be more patient with him and that she is not doing it the right way but now i have understood that by doing so i am just placing the additional burden of guilt in this heavy load of emotions that she is already going through what would be your advice to those who are in a similar situation i think everyone's experience of cancer is different uh, but that doesn't mean we have to experience it alone fortunately and fortunately due to the ever increasing number of cancer cases india is evolving to the needs of cancer patients and their families there are palliative care counselors there are doctors and coaches 
who help not only the patient but also help the family cope with the situation i have sought counseling um, i have also set up a conversation for my mom with a palliative care counselor to get her all the mental support she needs and the help to navigate through this tough time but my final advice honestly to everyone would be to just take it a day at a time and reach out for help because there is no bravery in trying to do this alone thank you கோவை வாணியின் சார்பாக திருமதி முதிதாவை அறிமுகம் செய்த திரு கிருஷ்ணன் அவர்களுக்கும் மனம் உருகும்படி உரையாற்றிய முதிதாவுக்கும் அவரை பேட்டி கண்ட சமீருக்கும் மிக்க நன்றியை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கிறோம் முதிதாவின் எழுபத்தைந்து வயதான தந்தை திரு கைலாஷ் அவர்களுக்கு முதல் முதலாக முத முதுகில் தசைவலி ஏற்பட்டு உறங்கியவாறே இருந்தார் மாத்திரைகளும் உடற்பயிற்சி சிகிச்சையும் பலனளிக்காததால் வேறு மருத்துவரிடம் சென்றபோது அவருடைய செஸ் ஸ்கேன் பெட் ஸ்கேன் எம்ஆர்ஐ போன்ற பலவிதமான சோதனைகளின் மூலம் அவருக்கு நுரையீரலில் புற்றுநோய் இருப்பதை கண்டறிந்தனர் அதுவரை அவர்கள் இருந்த குடியிருப்பின் தலைவராக திரு கைலாஷ் மிகவும் நன்றாக நிர்வாகம் செய்து கொண்டிருந்தார் திடீரென்று இந்த நோய் கண்டறியப்பட்டவுடன் குடும்பமே நொறுங்கிவிட்டது விரைவாக நுரையீரல் இருந்த நுரையில் நுரையீரலிலிருந்து மூளை எலும்பு நிணநீர் கணுக்கள் மற்றும் கல்லீரலில் புற்றுநோய் படர்ந்து நான்காம் நிலையை அடைந்துவிட்டது குடும்பத்தார் மனம் சிதைந்து போனாலும் அவர் எதிரே மன உளைச்சலை காட்டிக்கொள்ளாமல் நகைச்சுவையுடனும் சாதாரணமாகவும் நடந்து கொண்டனர் ஒரு செவிலியர் அன்றாட தேவைகளை பார்த்து கொள்ள அவருடைய தாயார் மனம் உடல் மற்றும் ஆன்மீக ரீதியான தேவைகளை கவனித்து கொண்டார் நோயாளியை பராமரிப்பவர்கள் அவர் கூறுவதை கூர்ந்து கவனிக்கிறார்கள் என்று நோயாளி நம்புவது மிகவும் அவசியம் அவருடைய சுற்றுச்சூழல் அவர் மனதுக்கு நிம்மதி அளிக்குமாறு சின்ன சின்ன மாற்றங்களை செய்ய வேண்டும் யாரேனும் உறவினர்கள் வந்தாலோ சுற்றுச்சூழலில் சில மாற்றங்கள் கண்டாலோ அவர் மனதில் உற்சாகம் ஏற்படுகிறது அவருக்கு சௌகரியமான இருக்கக்கூடிய ஆடைகளை அணிவிக்க வேண்டும் அவரால் செய்யக்கூடிய சிறிய சிறிய செயல்கள் அவர் செய்யவில்லை என்றால் அவரை நிர்பந்திக்கக்கூடாது ஏனெனில் அவரை அறியாது இந்த நோய் அவர் சக்தி இழக்க செய்து விடுகிறது நோயின் நோயின் தீவிரம் காரணமாக அவர் இரவில் காலை வணக்கம் கூறினால் நாமும் பதிலுக்கு காலை வணக்கம் சொல்லலாம் கீமோதெரப்பி ரேடியேஷன் போன்ற சிகிச்சைகள் அவருடைய உணவு உட்கொள்ளும் சக்தியை பாதிப்பதுண்டு நோய் தடுப்பு ஆலோசகரின் அறிவுரைப்படி அவரை நன்றாக கவனித்து கொள்ள வேண்டும் தாயார் தன்னால் இயன்றவரை அவருக்கு பாடி கொண்டு சேவை செய்து கொண்டிருக்கும் பொழுது சில சமயங்களில் பொறுமை இழக்க நேரலாம் அப்பொழுது அவரை கண்டித்தால் அவரின் குற்ற உணவால் பாதிக்கப்படலாம் அதனால் இதை தவிர்ப்பது நல்லது தீராத நோய்வாய்ப்பட்டிருப்பவர்கள் அளவு கடந்த துன்பம் அனுபவிப்பதை பார்த்து கொண்டிருக்கும் பராமரிப்பவர்கள் அவருக்கு எவ்வளவு வசதிகள் செய்து கொடுக்க முடியுமோ அவற்றை செய்து பின்னர் அவர்கள் மேலும் மேலும் அவதிப்படாமல் நிம்மதியாக கடைசி தருணங்களை அனுபவிக்க வழி செய் வழிவகுக்க வேண்டும் பராமரிப்பவர் முன மனதில் உறுதி வேண்டும் ஒவ்வொரு நாளாக சமாளிக்க வேண்டும் அவர் அன்று உணவு சாப்பிட்டாரா அன்று நல்ல நாள் அவர் பக்தி பாடல்களை கேட்டாரா அன்று நல்ல நாள் அவர் சிறிதாக புன்முறுவல் செய்தாரா அன்று நல்ல நாள் நாம் சொல்வதை கேட்டாரா அன்று நல்ல நாள் என்று நினைத்து கொள்ள வேண்டும் பேச முடியாமல் தன்னுடைய உணர்வுகளை பகிர்ந்து கொள்ள முடியாத பொழுதிலும் நாம் பேசுவதை அவர் புரிந்து கொள்வார் அதனால் நாம் காட்டும் பரிவும் அன்பும் அவருக்கு கொஞ்சம் மன அமைதியை கொடுக்கும் நாற்பது வருடங்களுக்கு மேல் அவருடன் வாழ்ந்த தாய் படும் அவஸ்தையை சொல்லி மாளாது வாழ்க்கையை மிகவும் கண்ணியமாக வாழ்ந்தவர் அவதிப்படுவதை அவரை சார்ந்தவர்களால் ஒன்றும் செய்ய முடியாமல் பார்த்து கொண்டிருப்பது எல்லாவற்றையும் விட கொடுமை ஒவ்வொருவரும் நோயாளிகளை கையாளும் முறை வித்தியாசமாக இருக்கும் இதுதான் சரி என்று வரையறுக்க முடியாது சந்தர்ப்ப சூழ்நிலைக்கேற்ப மனதைரியத்துடனும் அன்போடும் பரிவோடும் பொறுமையோடும் பராமரிப்பவர் இருக்கது இருக்க வேண்டும் நோயுற்ற நபரின் கண்ணியத்துக்கு மதிப்பளிப்பது மற்றும் அவர்களின் கடைசி சில நாட்களை அமைதியுடன் வாழ அனுப அனுப அனுமதிப்பது சிறந்தது ஆகும் என்று கூறி உங்களிடமிருந்து விடை பெறுவது ரேவதி பாஸ்கர்
थैंक यू एंड स्टे ट्यून्ड